Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll give you an overview of MySQL database and explain you how to install MySQL in a Linux system. MySQL database is one of the world's most widely used open source database. On the scales of performance, security and other aspects, MySQL databases are actually considered superior as compared to other enterprise RDBMSs like Oracle or MS SQL. So a lot of softwares are also available in the market which contributes to its popularity and enhances the features which MySQL can provide. The MySQL database was initially created by a Swedish company known as MySQL AB. The My in MySQL is the initial of daughter's name of the co-owner Michael Widnes and SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Currently it is licensed under Oracle although we have a community edition which we can use for free. In 2010, Oracle combined its MySQL dev team with InnoDB. InnoDB is now a storage engine used in MySQL. In the community edition and the licensed edition which Oracle has released, there are many forks for MySQL. That is, since it's an open source, other companies have developed their own version of MySQL, like MariaDB and Percona. Now let us have an overview of MySQL architecture. The basic architecture in MySQL is a client-server architecture where we have MySQL D programs which are the core programs and acts as a server and we have agent programs like MySQL which connect to the servers through socket or TCP connections. MySQL D is a single process multi-threaded program where each connection to the database is a thread. So here this is the client part and this is the server part. The client connection API can be a JDBC, ODBC or other programming language connections. So when the request or query comes to the MySQL server, it is handled by the connection pool, which sends it to the parser. The parser will convert the query into binary code. The parser then passes this query to the query cache. So if the query is already present in the query cache, it returns the result set from the query cache itself. If the query is not present in query cache, query is sent from parser to query optimizer. Query optimizer contains index and table statistics, which generates the execution plan for the particular query. From the optimizers, the query is sent to the pluggable storage engines. So there are various storage engines available with MySQL. The default from 5.5 is InnoDB. And from the storage engine, the query is passed on to the underlying file system database. We also have services and utilities for backup, restore and other features and SQL interfaces for DML, DDL, procedures and triggers etc. So this is just a high level overview of how a MySQL architecture looks like. So now let us work on installing our MySQL database into a Linux system. Log into dev.mysql.com. Scroll down to MySQL downloads. Go for MySQL community server. Select the operating system. So I am using Red Hat. So I'll go for Red Hat. Mine is RHL7. Now go for an RPM bundle and click on download. Either you can create an account for Oracle to download a MySQL Community Edition, or you can just start with the download. Once you have downloaded the bundle, just copy it to your Linux server. First, untar this file. In most cases, you'll require a client, common, libs, and server package to get a standard MySQL installation. Run the command yum install MySQL community server client commons and lib. Give us yes. So this will install each of the package in your local Linux. So now the installation has been completed. I have given this yum install command in my description. Now to start your MySQL server, just provide service MySQL D start. Now I'll check if the process is running by grepping MySQL D. So you can see there is a process for MySQL D. So these are the paths which are affected by an RPM installation. The user bin path will have the client programs and script. User has bin path will have the MySQL D server files. The default path for log files and database is warlib mysql. 
The manual info will be in user share info. Unix man page is in user share man. The headers will be in user include mysql. The library files will be in user lib mysql. And miscellaneous files will be in user share mysql. Fault configuration file used to start the mysql d server is etc my.cnf. So you can see it has the path for data directory, the log file, PID file, etc. The default port for a MySQL server is 3306. Now, if I try to log in to the MySQL client, it won't allow me because it needs authentication. So by default, for the first access, the password is auto-generated in the log files. So you can check the log files and grep for localhost. So you can see this is the default password which has been generated. So now if you want to log in, you can use mysql u root and hyphen p. Just enter this password and you will be able to log into the mysql shell. Now you can reset your default password using alter user command and just provide the new password. So you can see the password has been updated. Now I'll log in again using my new password. Now you can run your SQL statements. So this was just a basic overview of MySQL database architecture and how to install MySQL in your local. In next set of videos, I'm planning to do other topics related to MySQL. Thank you for watching my video.